Are you good? I love men's day or event or can I can I talk honest to you right now about everything and the rest of you what do you think <laughs> you know we, we, we take as a, a permission if just one say yes and the rest of them say what are you thinking about well I don't I don't think about anything I just want to talk to you what is a real man when I'm going into this subject, I, I'm, um, I'm, I have my perspective, and this is not the, the, the full picture, but it's, it is some thoughts about what is a man. Because if we are honest, the, the, the picture of a man has changed so much the last 20 to 30 years that my dad, which are in heaven, he would never recognize the next generation how they think about themselves. So the self-image to be a man uh, is not, I, let, let me speak very honest, I don't think it's on the right place, the self-image of being a man. I, I, I don't know the statistic here in, uh, in, in Holland, but in Norway there are a common generation of men that doesn't care about women. They do not, they do just care about themselves. They have a huge screen. They don't care about their health. They don't care about be something for, for other people. And they buy sex when they want to have it. And they spend their uh, money on their, their, their own world what have value for them. And that means that the whole thing about being a man in God's perspective, it is to change the world to show the image of God, just like Jesus is the image of God. And we look to Jesus, uh, what is a man? What is this my purpose? This is not to talk down to women, it's just to find a place that, what is my responsibility as a man? And how can I live that out? How can I not be so consumed of this culture that actually I fit into the culture without even thinking as uh, Romans 12 1 and 2 says so this is the this is a challenge that I challenge myself all the time to be a man that uh, my wife is proud of and, and also uh, my kids likes and also be an example for next generation of leaders and also other people that looking into to, to my life and say I I want to be like him it's, it's not because of my muscles or fat or, or my, my, my intellect. It's more in my, my character, my values, my belief system. That's the kind of software of, uh, of what we are as men. And I, I think the potential for the man is huge. And uh, when I'm talking about the man sitting at home, we, we are hunters, you know that. Especially when you become 15, 16, 17, you're on a hunt. You're looking for some, someone to take down. And I, that's a part of the game. It, it is our, in our genes. And, and, um, and don't, don't miss that. But when you are married, you have to manage that. So use that energy not to ha hunt others, but to make the best place on the planet in your home and in your marriage. So uh, it is time for us to take some territory back as men. The lady needs us. You're, are you with me? The lady needs us. And um, if you don't stand for anything, you fall for everything. If you don't stand for anything, you fall for everything everything that means that you need to be aware of what should support what do i supposed to how to live and looks and not looks <laughs> uh, live and and have a view on as a man so i can be something that are standing on the ground and not be pushed around so here we go of the uh, the first one is acts of the um, acts uh, 13.22 But God removed Saul and replaced him with David. And listen to this. A man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. 
He will do everything I want him to do. And to, that's the result of David. But sometimes I'm thinking of what about, what was it about David that God himself said, a man after my own heart. How could God say that? Because David, he was not guilt free. He had blood, blood on his hands. He made adultery. He betrayed Uriah. He 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 did he did a lot of a um, lot of uh, bad things actually. So how could God say that he was a man after his own heart? He was not a superhero. He was not a pop star. He was humble. He was not an athlete. He was he asked for forgiveness, but he never gave gave up the dream. You see, if we, when he gave the baton to um, to his son. What he had in his mind, it was to build the church. And he put all his, his efforts in to prepare the whole thing for, uh, for his son to build the church for Jesus, for, for God, not Jesus at that time. So, uh, are you ready to take notes? I have some points here. I don't know how long I... Mamma mia, what's the matter with that clock? Um, so here we go. We don't have time to clap and nothing. Number one, he takes responsibility. A real man takes responsibility. And uh, he takes responsibility. He's stepping up. He listens to God and to friends and, and who give him good advice. And he sees something and he takes action action on it he not only see it and becoming a consultant that telling everyone else what to do but he's stepping in and taking responsibility responsibility in economy responsibility in sex life and all in marriage and also in example of his life he taking responsibility based on God's word it's so important to say that based on God's word, because if you're based on the, the, the different values, values in the society are changing all the time, that we need to have a value system that are founded on something greater than ourselves. Number two, he always serves. He always serves. Uh, I thought it was, um, uh, are you quite sure on that? Yes, I'm quite sure. If, because uh, in Acts 13.36, it's not coming on, on the wall. For David, after he has served his own generation, after he has served his own generation, so we just here to serve. If you're a man, you take responsibility, but you also serve. Serve. You serve next generation. You serve this generation. You serve your family. You serve your spouse. You serve your kids. You even serve in church. So I am a pastor, but I'm serving towards the gift God has given me so the church can be built on the serving. And the same with family. When you are a man, you serve in the family. You even vacuum clean. You take in responsibility and take uh, cutting the grass and everything. You do everything. You even massage your wife if you are blessed to have a wife. You can even smile when your wife asks about massage in the neck. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians 5.25. Don't go too far on that. Ephesians 5.25. Husbands, love your wives. Seek the highest good for her and surrounding her with caring, unselfish love. And listen, don't serve just to have sex. I'm talking to you. Yeah. You give a massage because after you can, uh, you know, baby, baby, baby. No, selfless, because you're building something in the atmosphere. It's not about myself, I want to have sex three times a day, morning, dinner, and in evening. No, it's about serving morning, dinner, and night in Jesus' name. And, and listen, listen, we haven't time for that. So uh, listen to this. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Jesus is our great example. As he gave his life. What man would give his life for his wife and for his kid? A real man would do that. 
But the most men today, they say that, oh, you know, I don't have enough sex and I'm feeling we're drifting away. And the secretary is, mad, it's better, bum, mamma mia. And then all the time, we're thinking about ourselves instead of serving. Because we, if you serve, you get a real quality in life. Amen. Number three, he lived by faith. A real man, he lived by faith. It's not about what you see. To be honest, when I, uh, I get, uh, uh, when, when I dating my wife, Britt, which, I, which is a gift from heaven, I was very, um, uh, very unmature. Uh, don't let this come out. It's just between you and me. So, so I was afraid of the calling of God, really. So one night, I had this, this bad feeling. What about the future? Well, what about calling? What, what about Jesus? What about, what, what do you know that I don't know? So I went to her and I said, let's have the honest talk. And I was 18 years and she was 18 and, and, and we talked about the future. And so she said that, well, I think I have a calling of God. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, I have to say, if you're not ready to follow Jesus in all season, it's over right here, right now, before you have started. So after 10 seconds of praying and fasting, so I, come, I, I come to the conclusion that I want to have that faith that you have. So the whole thing about, I was not a mature man, but what I learned, I will be teachable. And right there, the Spirit of God told me a lesson I never will forget. There is someone that can speak by the Holy Spirit into your life. So uh, she did. And uh, Hebrew 10, 38 said, No, the just shall live by faith. Not go to church by faith. Not only do something when you feel it's right, but you should live by faith. But, but if, if, if anyone draws back, my soul have no pleasure in him. That means actually what, can, what really can, 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 can um, satisfy God is a man who live by faith for his family, for his value, for his belief system, and also for the church. And I, I think there is, so, there is, this is one of the problems that there is so few pastors that want to see a breakthrough in the different nation, especially here in Europe. We don't live by faith. We listen to the voices. We don't want to, we don't want to have the pain to go towards what it is. In my mind, I, when I close my eyes and start dreaming about what the church could be in Norway, this is the faith I want to have. This is the dream I want to carry on to the next generation. Amen. Number four. Is this good? Oh, it seems like the clock is not going so fast. <laughs> I love that. I love the techniques. Can you please slow it all down a little bit more? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Number four. He takes his hands from what is dirty. When you're clean, when you have a good conscience, when you have, uh, you know that you know you, that you know you have right motives, you can be free and you can be full of courage. But if you're clean inside, that will actually take away the courage and uh, and uh, uh, well the courage to to live a a, a good life that you want to live as an example and I I don't know about you but in, in this book I have a whole chapter about porn 75% of the men have problem with the porn that means that we regularly at least once a month are spending time before the screen it could be picture it could be movies it could be everything and we we doing the thing about Porn. And this is, uh, thank you for your enthusiasm right here, but because this is one of the things that, that, that uh, take us down because we um, we, 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 we feeling guilty because we're doing this and we're not coming free of it. And I have to say that two of my colleagues, I have been, I've been working with them for years because it used to be a problem. Uh, in one of my friends, we installed software on his computer, so I should have a, uh, I should have an email all the time. He what, uh, went to, to uh, web pages where different, uh, different uh, codes, names 
came up. And another one, another one we regularly uh, went to prayer and went to talk and, and read the Bible together. And both of them, they are totally free today. And they're living a godly, good life with the family and also in ministry. So I, I, I have, because this is a huge problem and it will, be, it will become even worse for the next generation. So we need to address this. We need to talk about it. It's not about you, you cannot do it because uh, mom and dad say so, but to understand, destroy your soul, destroy your picture of what sex life could be. It is, it is, it's not real at all. It's fake all the time. And when next generation see this is fake, what should they do? They, they going wild because they always, they always on a hunt for something more. And we need to go back and tell people, you destroy your soul if you do this. And the good news is that I want to help you. Your pastor want to help you. You have good friends in life so talk honest about uh, uh, at least this so have to do with porn and then uh, and also the, the whole thing about me too I think we men we always if we see a, a beautiful creation and uh, summertime a little clothes and a, a t-shirt not going here but maybe here and like that and that triggers something in our life and we need to talk about this because it, it's not wrong to see that God have made something beautiful, but it's wrong to follow that to take it down. It's wrong to follow that, to, to, to have a part of it, to touch it. The whole thing about Me Too um, uh, wave that we have been in the last couple of years, it is actually, it is actually that we touching something we don't own. Go home and touch your wife. <laughs> That's interesting when you're 20 and 30 and 40, but when you're coming to 50 and 60, it's even better. Uh, are you still alive? I said it's even better. So get alive. But you don't go to, to someone you don't own. You go home and you eat meat there and have a great party. And if, you, if the world sucks, kiss your wife. So, number five, is this good? <laughs> More sex, yes. I will tell wife you said that. So, number five, he confronts, what is a man? He confronts in love. The whole thing about confrontation is, is difficult because when you confront, there is tension. Uh, remember the last time your wife confronted you. You were so excited. Thank you, baby, for telling me this. Woo! No. You starting argue. All the time that you, you're coming into confrontation, you, you, you can become uh, in a position of arguing. But I have to say, as a man, to confront is so important. It, maybe it's you should start to confront yourself. Five, five, find five areas you really want to have a change on and write it down and, give, and, and send the envelope to yourself. Some years ago, you know, we have been through the coaching mentoring wave and, and I, I have a lot of mentor and coach and, and so on. And so I come to the point, I can do this better myself. So I, I, I bought a book, Coach Yourself, and I was sitting, I was sitting on an island in the middle, uh, middle Mediterranean, and I wrote a letter to myself, I'm coaching myself. I sent it by mail, so when I come home, I have a, I have a mail from my, uh, in my post, uh, uh, post and, 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 and I coach myself. And the whole thing about this, that if you can confront, you cannot lead. If you don't confront, confront yourself, you cannot lead yourself. And that means that every couple, every man should have written value, should have a, a statement of the purpose of life because that's the guidelines when you need to confront yourself. And so if you have the blessing to be, to be a dad, so the whole thing about raising kids, it's about confrontation, isn't it? I said, no. I said, no. If you do that once more time, ah, uh, you have no ice cream tomorrow. Whatever the pastor says, you have no ice cream tomorrow. The whole thing about raising kids is about confrontation. 
But you, when you love the kids, you do that in a very good way. If you cannot com confront, you cannot lead. But I, I am, my experience is uh, I don't have to confront my wife. It's going the opposite. So maybe I should, maybe don't let this, uh, don't tell her about this. But, uh, but um, I learned something from her confrontation. Yeah, number six. Uh, what is a man? His example is from a bow, from godly men and women who walk the talk. And I think that um, Pastor Errol did a brilliant job here in, in his session, talking about who are you following. The whole thing about following means that you need to see that those people I recognize something in that stimulate me to be a better example by myself. That means that uh, if you think that I'm the man, woohoo, I'm the man, I, I manage all areas, communication, money and sex and, and relation, everything, then you actually have stopped developing yourself as a man. You always need to have good examples in your life if you're young or if you're at my age. But my example is from the Bible, most and foremost. And if you see a different person in, in, in the Bible, you could identify yourself so easily. Take Moses, uh, take David, take a lot of those godly men that actually not one of them was a winner in all areas. So if you want to increase your skills as a man, listen to the Bible, what they are telling about a man. But, uh, but uh, uh, according to David, he was a man after God's own heart. He was humble and he was building the church. I think that was one of those things that's really helped him. Number six, uh, have we talked to, uh, talked about? Uh, number seven, uh, you can trust him. He does what he says. You can trust him. The, the whole thing about trust, it is actually scary because if you, if you, if you say yes and do no, what, what is that? That's the mistrust. Then you, you de decrease the way people look at you. And it is always, it's always funny to have a wedding and the bride is coming here, the groom is here, and the pastor is here, and it's a kind of moment. And you ask the question, will you love this person for the rest of your life in good days and bad days? And the man and, and the groom is standing there, oh baby, I'm looking forward to tonight. Come on, it's gotta be awesome, you and me. And he, he, he have not been into 10, 20, 30 years in a row. He have not been into his own death process because it's not about him anymore. When he say yes, he don't know what he say yes to. And this is the point that we need to be serious about life, values and, pur and, and purposes so we can really do what we say we are up to and doing. And Genesis, bless you, Genesis 6-9, these are the records of the generation of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, one who have, ha, was just and have right standing with God. The cast blameless in his evil generation. And listen to this. Noah walked or lived in habitable fellowship with God. And this is what the man is doing. He does what he say he does. That means that when God told him, build a, build a flipping boat on land. <laughs> How stupid can you get? I know you can do that here in, in Holland because you're under the, beneath of the, of the surface of the North Sea. I understand that. But if you do that on the top mountain top in Norway, everybody was like crazy. But he did it because God told him. And he said to the family, I'm gonna build a boat. My life is about, about a boat. And I, did, it's a, I will save the planet, I will say, save the humanity, because I'm living in an evil generation. And he went for the purposes of God, and he just did it. And when the family saw that the, the flood was coming, what do you think they, they think? Well, I believe in that man. He heard from God, he did the work, and it become good. This is what a man is. He, a man does what he say he want to do.